Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see how to deploy API to the Azure Kubernetes Service cluster. So this, this, is, this is the step four. In step three, I was able to configure the Helm stable repository using the Helm chart on to deploy MongoDB to the AKS cluster. In this, we will deploy the API to the AKS cluster. So in this video, we will create a Kubernetes deployment for the RESTful API that will be a connection between my MongoDB instance and the web frontend that is my ratings API as well and we'll create a Kubernetes service to expose the RESTful API over the network. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. Before logging on to the portal, if you would just see the architecture that we're going to see in this uh, video. So I have an Azure Kubernetes Service cluster. I have my ratings API that I will deploy. And uh, this deployment will give you as a way to provide declarative updates for ports. So we'll describe the desired state of the workload in a deployment manifest file and use kubectl to submit the manifest to the deployment controller, the AKS plane. And then the deployment controller in turn actions the desired state of the defined workload. For example, it would deploy a new port. It will increase the port count or decrease the port count. So if you will see, I have my cluster API, I have my ratings API as well, and I would have to, there's a MongoDB traffic, I have my ratings API as well here that I'm going to deploy, and then would make a way for my MongoDB traffic, all right, so now let me just log on to the portal and take it from there, I'm logged on to the portal and I'm going to have to create a manifest file for the Kubernetes deployment called uh, ratings API. Then the YAML file name would be ratings API deployment.yaml. So if I'm going to do, sorry, if I'm going to do code ratings dash API deployment.yaml. It would open up a file for me. So Azure Cloud Shell includes an integrated file editor as well. The Cloud Shell editor supports features such as language highlighting, command palette, and file explorer. So we can just, uh, for a simple file creation and editing, you can launch the editor by running code space dot in the Cloud Shell terminal, like, or you can specify the file name as well. So let me just paste the content in the manifest file. Here it is. If you would see the API version, kind, metadata. So in this file, I will have to update the ACR name value in the image key with the name of my ACR instance. So let me do that. Okay, I updated the name here, which is going good as far. So review the file. So image. So if you would see the image section here, which is this. So we'll create a deployment with a replica running the image we pushed to the ACR instance uh, that we created. And the container listens to port 3000. If you would see here. Okay. And the secret key reference that we have here here. The ratings API that I'm going to deploy expects to find the connection details to the MongoDB database in an environment variable name MongoDB underscore URI. By using value from a secret key reference, we can reference value stored in Mongo secret, the Kubernetes secret that was created when we deployed MongoDB in the last video. And the resources section here, this one, the one that I highlighted, each container instance is given a minimum of 0.25 cores and 64 MB of memory. The Kubernetes scheduler looks for a node with available capacity to schedule such a port. 
a container might or might not be allowed to exceed its CPU limit for extended periods, but it won't be killed for excessive CPU usage. And if a container exceeds its memory limit, it could be terminated. And if I do readiness probe and liveness, liveness probe, the application exposes a health check endpoint at slash health. If the API is if the API is unable to connect to MongoDB, the health check endpoint returns a failure. We can use these probes to configure Kubernetes and check whether the container is healthy and ready to receive traffic. To save the file, I have to do Control S like this. And I can do from here as well. And then I can close the editor as well. Like this. Now I have to apply the configuration by using kubectl apply command. So let me just paste it here. And it will apply my configuration. Very good. And now I have deployment.apps waiting API created. Now I can watch the ports rolling out using the W flag with the kubectl get ports command. Let me just do that. So if I just do this, hit enter. So the status is running and the pod is getting created. So the rest of the pods are also getting created. And I used the W flag here. And I'm making sure that I'm querying the ports for ratings app namespace that are labeled with the ratings dash API. And I can do control C to stop this watching. And uh, my pod is running. I can do C. And if I just do kubectl get ports, Oh, I have to mention the names space as well, which is reading app. So I have two ports, MongoDB readings API. And if the ports are not starting or not, or are not ready or are crashing, I can view their logs by using kubectl logs command with specifying the port name under the namespace. And uh, I can check the status of the deployment as well. I'm going to do cube CTL get deployment and the name of the my API. I'm sorry, rating stash. And the namespace is. Ratings app. Okay. It is ready. And now I'm going to create a Kubernetes service for the ratings API service. So a service is a Kubernetes object that would, uh, that provides a stable networking for ports by exposing them as a network service. We use Kubernetes service to enable communication between nodes ports and users of the application both internal and external to the cluster service just like a node or port gets an IP address assigned by Kubernetes when I when we create them services are also assigned a DNS name based on the service name and a TCP port a cluster IP would allow us to expose a Kubernetes service on an internal IP in the cluster and this type would only make the service only reachable from within the cluster. So our next step is to simplify the network configuration for the application workloads. We'll use the Kubernetes service to group our pods and provide network connectivity. So I'm going to create a manifest file for the Kubernetes service called YAML and then would apply that configuration. So, so I'm going to launch another file by doing code reading dash API dash services or service dot YAML 
and I'm going to paste the content here. Now, if you would see the selector section here, what does it say? The selector determines the set of pods targeted by a service. In the following uh, file, Kubernetes load balanced the traffic to pods that have the label as ratings API. This label was defined when you when we created the deployment. The controller for the service continuously scans for pods that match that label. So to add them to the load balancer. And if you would see the ports section here, this one, a service can map an incoming port to target port. So incoming port uh, is what the service responds to over the internet. And the target port is what the pods are configured to listen. The, the service is exposed internally within the cluster at port 80 and load balances the traffic to the ratings API listening on port 3000. And if you would see the type, type is cluster IP. The service of type cluster IP creates an internal IP address for use within the cluster. Choosing this value makes the service reachable only from within the cluster. And it is the default service type. So same way I'm going to save it i'm going to close the editor and then i'm going to apply my configuration so i will use cube cube serial apply namespace ratings app dash f ratings service dot yaml so this is the name of my file so kubectl apply namespace ratings app and the file name is ratings dash api dash service dot yaml service is created and if i'm going to Check the status of this deployment or the service. I would say and ratings app. Okay. Perfect. Now the service should show an internal IP which is 10.2.0.43 by default Kubernetes creates a DNS entry that would map to my service local name so notice how cluster IP comes from the Kubernetes service address we defined when we created the cluster so finally we have to validate the endpoints services would load balance traffic to the ports through endpoints so the endpoint has the same name as the service now I have to validate that the service points to one endpoint that corresponds to the pod. So I'm going to use cube serial get endpoints for my ratings API under the namespace ratings app. Right, so this is the endpoint. So, on which my service is listening. And this is also coming from the subnet that I defined when I created a cluster. So, we have now created a deployment of the ratings API and I have exposed it to internal service. Deployment, the name of the deployment is ratings API. The API running a replica which reads the MongoDB connection details by mounting mongo secret when that we deployed in the last video and we have a service called as ratings api under the rating api the, this api is ex exposed internally within the cluster at ratings dash api dot ratings app dot svc dot cluster dot local on the port 80 so what did we do in this video we created a kubernetes deployment for the ratings api by creating a deployment manifest file and then applying it to the cluster 
we also created a Kubernetes service for the ratings API by creating a manifest file and then applying it to the cluster. We now have a ratings API endpoint that is available through a cluster IP over the network. In the next video, you will also see the similar process to deploy the ratings website, the front end that would accept the outcoming, the incoming connection and the API that we created in this video is responsible to make a connection from that front end web, front end uh, a website to the MongoDB. I hope you enjoyed this. If you still have any queries, please mention them in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.